Okay, so to take off the back panel, it's just held on by these little clips, much like all the other panels on the car. That's what it looks like without the panel on. Uh, basically, you can get something underneath there to pry it off. I know they have special instruments, but I basically just grab and pull, and typically it comes off no problem. But one of the times I did break the clips, but if necessary, you can replace them on Amazon for only a couple dollars. No big deal. Okay, so the back gate latch is going to be a lot more simple than the rest of the doors. You're going to unhook this, which is uh, the locking mechanism. We're going to undo this right here, which is the latch release mechanism. And then there's two power cords. There's a green one here, and there's, I believe it's yellow back here. Just connect both of those, and then come around here, undo these two bolts, and that should take the whole mechanism off. So getting it off is pretty straightforward, but in case you get to this point, you have to pop out that little knob to get this piece off. On this one side, there's just a little tiny tab right there. Just push it in, it slides off. It's hard to see in case you have trouble. And then, the whole thing will come out once you have those two screws on. Two power supplies and the two lines. There you go. Okay, so I have the whole assembly dangling here by the cable that's attached to the handle, because I wanted to demonstrate how to take that cable on and off, okay? So it sits like that usually when it's up in there. So what you have to do to get it off is you line it up like this and then it still doesn't slide off. What you have to do is push it that way and do it one handed and then it comes off and then you put it back on the same way. All right, so after you take those two screws out, you're basically just gonna pry the whole mechanism apart I think they use some glue to hold it together, so it is a bit of work to pry it apart. But then that's what you're gonna be looking at. Really simple mechanism, one gear, spiral gear here, and that little latch, which is gonna twist this right here, and either lock or unlock the door, okay? Much more simple than the passenger doors and the driver's side door. So we've just slid the motor out of the gearbox uh, we pulled this off. You'll notice it's the same size motor uh, as the rest of the doors on the car, but the shaft here is 20 millimeters instead of 10, and it is the D-type or flat-type shaft. You may be able to see there's a little notch taken out right there. Now, I have these motors that I had bought to replace um, the front doors on the car, the actuators there. They are the FC280 PC22125, but these are only a 10 millimeter D or flat shaft. However, I think I can still use it because it will still um, fit with this motor. Okay, so I tested it out and I'm going to strongly recommend that you use the correct 20 millimeter D shape. So this has the 15 millimeter in it. What you don't see right here is that the motor locked and then it wouldn't unlock because we'll be able to tell if we pull it out, it's binding right here on the plastic because there's not enough length to keep it out here so it's jamming down on the plastic. Let's see if I pull the motor out. We'll probably see it unwind and unbind. Yeah, I don't know if you heard or saw that, but it was wound and bound. And now it's free again. So, do a 20 millimeter D shape. You can use the same motor though, it just has a different shaft on it. Okay, so I got the right size motor. You can see the motors themselves are the exact same size, but it's the shaft that's different. So this is the 20 millimeter D shaft, and that's gonna be what you're gonna need. I tried using the 10 and it just didn't work. It either would bind up against the motor or it would spin off and you wouldn't get any grip. So this should work the right way. I'll put the links below if you need it. So these metal leads right here, they just pop out and then you can put them in the new motor and everything should slide in fairly simply. Okay, so I pushed it all back together. I got those two screws put back in and it's holding it pretty well. So even though there may have been some adhesive holding it together before, it feels pretty secure now. Uh, the only problem I had was this spring popped off. If you look closely, that spring is just straddling that piece of plastic there and providing resistance to the locking mechanism. Very easy to just put back on. You just slide it between that plastic piece and pop it back on here. And it works with no problems. The other thing I noticed that could be a problem is if you don't put this little knob back in this channel here so that it actuates in this manner. That's what actually allows the door to 
lock, unlock, open and close. So if you don't have that in there, then you won't be able to open the door and when you close it, you won't be very happy. So make sure the knob is inside this channel when you put everything back together. Okay, so once you're all done, if you want to test it out, you can plug in the green cable. Don't plug in the white ones. When you plug in the white one, it can tell the door's open. With it unplugged, it thinks the door's closed and then the locking mechanism will work. You can test it just to make sure it articulates like it's supposed to. There you go.